Hello. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm Christina with Ask a Montessorian. If you enjoy this video, please click like and subscribe. Today I'm going to share with you my math album. There we go. This is from the primary training for the Association of Montessori International, also known as AMI. And primary training is for three to six year olds. <laughs> I'm transferring the album to another binder because this binder is 18 years old. <laughs> I got an A on my album <laughs> in 2006. Yeah. And then let's see. What else do we have in here? I got a note from my trainer, Namal Vaz. She, um, I believe she's still at the Montessori Education Center. I should look that up. If you know, let me know. Um, in Phoenix at, I want to say 23rd Avenue. Let's see. Oh my goodness, it's been a minute. 19th Avenue in Dunlap. <clears throat> Somewhere in that area. Um, it says, good work, Christina. All exercises in table of contents and illustrations done. Album neat and organized. So we're gonna start with the table of contents. You guys can see that. There's a lot going on. It was a lot of work. It was fun though. In this training, we created one more time, just for good measure. We created um, nine albums. And this is one of them. It's 90 pages long. I'm just going to take out chunks. If you guys are interested in seeing specific lessons, let me know and I'll share them with you. So... The first section of the album focuses on numbers to 10. Then we have the decimal system, numbers to a thousand, exploration and memorization of tables, the passage to abstraction, which is when the child is beginning to no longer need the materials and they start to use their imagination, which is very strong in the second plane of development. Then we have fractions and then there's geometry, time, measure, and money. Oh, money. We're going to look at that one because that's important. So, we're going to start with Put that there. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the cards and counters. It's a very simple exercise that you can make at home. And the little counters are red plastic discs. And sometimes the numbers are cards. Sometimes the numbers in the exercise that we had at our training center. Um, with Namal, the numbers were um, little wooden um, carvings that were painted red. So, ooh, this one's one of my favorites. I actually have this one, so let me know if you want me to show you a couple of lessons on it, and I would be more than happy to. It's um, it's a long lesson because it has a lot of extensions and it covers, um, 
I believe it covers all four functions in math. In Montessori, they do addition, multiplication, subtraction, and then division because multiplication is just a fast form of addition and division is just a fast form of subtraction. So it's easier for the child to understand. There is a picture of this exercise and it is called the stamp game. So let's see. Oh yeah, we have a few different areas. So I'm going to show you multiplication. Here is the lesson on multiplication. I don't know if you guys can read that. I hope you can read that. If not, let me know. There we go. And then we have, let's see if I can find it, one of my favorites. I'll show you this one really quick. I have this one. It's do I have this one? Oh no, I apologize. I don't, I don't have that one. I have the checkerboard. I'm going to show you. I think it's in here. Ah, here it is. This is called the Sagan board after the famous. A mathematician say gone. Here is a picture. They also refer to this as the teen board. The teens and ten. Teens and tens. The teen board and beads is the official title. Teen board and beads. And then um, some people probably in Europe um, referred to it as the Saigon board. Because in, here in the States at the schools that I've observed, I've never heard of it. I've never heard anyone refer to it as the Saigon board. Here's the lesson. There were a couple of corrections. Hence, an A instead of an A+. Plus. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh. My mom made those corrections. <laughs> awesome. Here is another picture of the next step in the lesson. <clears throat> and there are more lessons that go along with the team boards. Let's see. Oh, this is another one that I really enjoyed doing when I was younger. I only, I only kind of like tinkered with it. I didn't really understand it until my primary training. But it was fun. I think I got to addition. You can do a lot with this work as well. This lesson is called the snake game. It is for five to five and a half year olds. And mm, I'll give you enough time to take a screenshot. Go. And I have procedure. I don't have the purpose on here. Usually I have the purpose at the beginning of each lesson, but this has to do with negative numbers, introducing negative numbers to the child. It has to do with um, observing, kind of testing their knowledge of linear counting. Um, 
the value of the colored bead bars, arranging the colored bead bars and matching with the tens. So there are black beads and white beads. And then you have the 10 bars, which are gold. And so they take different values of the black and white beads and match them to the gold bars to make sure. So you're ensuring that they can count to 10 and then see that connection, which is also a wonderful um, indirect preparation for equivalency when they start doing fractions. Oh, this is so cute. Okay, so this is the addition board. And here's a picture from one of my mom's students. She would know when this was taken, but it could have been as early as the 1960s as late as the 1980s. And this is <clears throat> it's called the Edition Board Charts 1 and 2. And here is the lesson. what the materials look like. Here's another drawing. And here's chart three. And here's chart four. Here is chart five. as much as I'm going to share with you on the addition boards. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Oh, that one. I love primary math. There's so many cool things you can do with it. And it's, it's, I don't know, it feels really special simply because of the fact that when I was younger, I was in my mom's Montessori classroom, so I got to see these materials, and then when I came into the training, I got to see them again. So this was one of my favorites. This one is called the Multiplication Board. The lesson. I do invite you to take a screenshot so you can refer to it if you need to. I have a lot of friends who took the AMS training so it's really fascinating to see the difference the differences between the trainings. There we go. All right. Ooh, here we have the division board. They actually refer to it as the unit division board because you're using green unit beads.
go. All right. And the next lesson I'm going to show you is oh, this comes in many steps. This is the small bead frame. And some of you may be familiar with an abacus. It's similar to an abacus. They use these um, in schools in Japan and probably other countries, but Japan, I know for certain. This is one of my favorites, too. <laughs> A lot of favorites. This is short and long division with racks and tubes. Oh, here we go. The aims are at the end of each lesson. Um, we put the purpose in the beginning in elementary, which I just finished in 2020, so I flipped them, um, to help the child arrive at abstraction in division. This is a fun lesson. The fraction sets. They're made out of metal. Some of the classrooms have them in plastic but a lot of the classrooms that I've observed have a metal set. This is a very long lesson. Um, well, I should clarify, it's a lesson that comes in different stages. Addition, subtraction. Multiplication and division with fractions. And prior to starting um, operations, you do want the child to be fairly um, fluent in equivalency. Okay, you have a pretty good understanding of equivalency. Forgive me, that's from my elementary training. In the elementary training, they get into um, different denominators. So they're, um, what's the word? Indirectly, because they're not abstracting yet. So they're indirectly learning equivalency in doing some basic math with the fractions. And division of a fraction with a whole number. There we go. I appreciate you guys bearing with me while I separate my primary from my elementary training. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful, beautiful work. There's so much that can be learned when the children actually get to hold the materials instead of looking at a piece of paper. All right. my One of my favorite lessons. It's very applicable for when they 
move on. Um, I have two side notes for you. One, make a pack because <laughs> they're so much fun. I just learned from TikTok. Ugh, I can't remember who did the video, but anyhow, um, I'll link it in the description. Uh, you take um, contact lens cleaner and put it in your old mascara and you'll get quite a few more uses out of it. And one of my friends, um, she's not a friend, she's an acquaintance, but someone commented on the TikTok that she got two more months <clears throat> out of her mascara use. And then we chatted back and forth. It was cute. So this lesson is geometry, time, measure, and money. Oh, I was going to tell you a side story. Okay, so here's this. And then I wanted to share with you that my trainer was very, what's the word? Um, opinionated about elementary Montessori. So she was an AMI primary trainer, but she didn't believe in elementary Montessori. She believed that if you, your child at, let's say, two and a half to three years old, because way back in the day in Maria Montessori's original lectures, she said the child ideally um, would stay home with mom and have that one-on-one. -on -one. And so between two and a half and three years old, if you do um, put them in the primary classroom and they stay in the primary classroom until five or six years old, hope ideally six, um, they do not need elementary Montessori because they're already abstracting and they can do all the paperwork in the public school. That was her philosophy. I had already learned from my mom how valuable elementary Montessori is, and that's what encouraged me to take the training, and I was blown away because it's still hands-on, and the children are still concentrating for large periods of time, whereas in a public school, they may be with the same teacher for the lower grades, but they're still interrupting for lunch. They're still interrupting for recess. They're still interrupting to go on to the next circle table or whatever it is that they're, you know, working on that day. Just so many interruptions in their concentration, which goes against the Montessori philosophy. So, and then my mom, back in the... She'll correct me on this. Mid-60s. I want to say... Mid 60s, late late 60s, maybe early 70s. Um, she had taken her well. She, that's when I believe that's when she took her primary training, and then she took her elementary training in the early 80s because I was at her school at that time. And her elementary, um, no, forgive me, her primary training that she took in um, the mid 60s was for three to seven or eight, something like that. Her, I think her diploma says like two to six. It's extended years back then. So they could teach even um, older children. And then I believe her elementary was something to that effect as well. She can correct me on that. I'll ask her to watch this and make some comments. <laughs> Oh, I did want to let you know that I'm going to be doing a um, YouTube video with my mom. So please feel free to prepare any questions you might have and put them in the comments. And then if we do get a whole lot of questions, I will do a live session with her. So that, and I'll let you all know um, the date and time on our channel. And we can ask her questions live because she's opened... 13 Montessori schools. She has over 50 years of experience working with children. Um, she owned, managed, and taught at her own Montessori school for <laughs> a few decades. And then she had Arizona Montessori Charter Schools. She's always been very ambitious. And um, she was trained by Maria's son, Mario Montessori. So 
She's a great wealth of knowledge. I'm looking forward to that video. <laughs> and if you have any suggestions on topics that you'd like me to cover with her, just let me know in the comments below. Here are some geometric terms. So based on this information, I'm sure all of you can surmise that Montessori goes well above and beyond traditional public school or private school um, education. Much more advanced academically. I will give you a side note on that. It's much more advanced academically if the Montessori teacher is giving 12 to 15 lessons per day on average. Maybe in primary, some of them are very long in practical life, especially with the young ones, you know, six to nine lessons a day, but keeping very careful notes and performing observations on a regular basis. And then obviously, Maybe not so obviously for some, but um, obviously the teacher has this beautiful love, this passion, this joy for working with the children. And that incites interest in learning, and the children absolutely love receiving lessons. Let's see here. Wow. We have <clears throat> glossary of arithmetical terms. We have rhymes, songs, and flannel, flannel boards for math. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about money. So, I have time and then money. So, you bring a graph into the classroom showing all of the coins, the penny, the nickel, dime, quarter. You bring this to a table, and when you have the five or six-year-olds, you can do small group lessons. And this depends on who you talk with, because some AMI people say, no, 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 only one-on-one -on -one in primary, but that I... From my experience in the primary classroom, as they got older, they could concentrate for longer periods of time just before they're getting ready to go into elementary. So I could have two or three at an advanced lesson. So you would bring the graph to the table and then you would show how many pennies make each coin on the graph. After the children are finished with the, one, the 100 chain, they may roll coins in coin wrappers. Then you introduce the paper money. You may use a money puzzle so that they can take the puzzle apart and learn, um, like for instance, the $20 bill and they know Benjamin Franklin, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin is on the $20 bill. <laughs> there are also commercial cards called making change like flashcards that you can get. And these are for children who can read. This is to aid in mathematics and geometry. And it's an indirect preparation for um, <clears throat> algebra because they're learning that 100 pennies also equals $1 bill, just like A equals three, for instance because you've got variables at play. And you bring money. You ask the children, they can bring money from home. Um, sometimes it's controversial, so you, know, you keep it in a safe spot. Teacher usually keeps it so that there aren't any little arguments over it, but um, you can bring money from home and show them in um, circle time. I had a consultant come and evaluate me from the AMI training center in Florida, and she did not agree with extended circle times. She said, um, like for instance, we did yoga every morning in circle. 
she encouraged me to begin doing yoga in the corner of the room and if the children wanted to join me they could um, I really enjoyed circle time it probably fed my ego a little bit to be honest but it was so much fun and we did um, a lot of singing and plays in the afternoon so we would spend time doing that in the afternoon um, you do want to maintain the three-hour work cycle in the morning so as long as the children are receiving lessons and concentrating for a minimum of three hours in the morning um, as either the latter part of the morning or um, in the afternoon circle time is great and um, the, the caveat is that the two and a half to three and a half four-year-olds movement even up until six sometimes it depends on the child case by case basis movement they need that movement so that they can concentrate they can concentrate for the stories in elementary and sit for you know 10 to 20 minutes so they get the they have the sensitive periods they get the movement out of their system when they're that age and then they're able to concentrate for longer periods of time as they grow older so um I would bring money into circle time and show them. We talk about the presidents and connect it to these flashcards that we had that gave some facts on each of the presidents over the years that have um, represented the United States and um, coins and show them, you know, how many coins are in each bill and whatnot and let them count them and work with them and <clears throat> always wash their hands because, <laughs> you know, money been all over the place. So uh, please feel free to ask a Montessorian. Thank you again for joining me here and I hope you all have a wonderful day.